Mike, you are known to buy the dip. So what are you yeah. buying and how much of it? Well, listen, I think there's been a big sell-off today. I think we always have to remember that crypto is still a retail dominated uh, ecosystem, right? We've got institutions that are moving in by the day and that's creating a lot of excitement. But there's lots of retail money, a lot of it's leveraged. Uh, there was about $4 billion of liquidations that happened in a short period of time this morning, right? That's mostly leveraged offshore in places like FTX and Binance. And the market got too long. Uh, it got long for good reason, right? I think in the last eight weeks, there has been a giant realization that crypto is not just Bitcoin being bought as a hedge against bad monetary and fiscal policy, but maybe more importantly, it's Web 3.0. It's the internet of value transfer. Uh, and when you see companies like Visa buying an NFT and saying they think digital goods is a big part of their future, Mm -hmm. Walmart and Amazon, the two biggest retailers in the world, putting up help wanted signs for crypto engineers and for crypto experts. Uh, there's a realization that this is a technology play and no investor wants to miss the next internet. This is the next internet. And so there was a lot of great price movement, right? We went from 29,000 to 53,000 yeah. in Bitcoin, and, you know, from whatever, 1800 all the way to 4,000 in Ethereum, a uh, Solana, a new, level one for most institutions yeah. has burst onto the scene. And so I think we just got too excited and this was the, yeah. a little air being you know, popped out of the, uh, the balloon. All right, Mike, we do want to get your thoughts on Solana, but before we move on to that, I, I am just curious as to what role, if any, governments then will have in this, because the El Salvador approach was, of course, much more just straight transactional, and we've seen sort of uh, some of the concerns uh, as to sort of uh, gravitating to a transactional uh, model for Bitcoin and other crypto assets here. If other governments uh, decide to get into this, what role do you think they would play in this environment? You know, there's, there's two different sides to this, right? Governments are going to be very, very protective of their national currencies, right? Their ability to, to tax and print currencies uh, is, is, is tantamount to them existing in lots of ways. And so I think they'll be okay with payments. You're going to see the rise of stable coins, right? China's issuing one. You'll see them in almost every major country, uh, you know, basically wrapped versions of those national currencies. Um, and I think things like Bitcoin, which in the West really are being used as store of value, people aren't using it as a transaction currency. I think what's unique in El Salvador is you know, 20% of their GDP comes from remittances. And so you can see lots of those remittances, people sending Bitcoin back across oceans uh, from the U.S. to El Salvador, and the locals either keeping it in Bitcoin because they're worried about the dollar, remember they have a dollarized economy, or converting it and, and spending it uh, in the local economy. And so, you know, it's, they're kind of unique in that respect. Uh, and we'll see, you know, maybe it, it gets used as a transactional currency. I've never thought it would be, partly because I think it's going to keep going higher. And why would you spend something that's going to keep going higher? Well, could you argue, though, why would you spend on something on days like today where 10 minutes later it, it drops 10 percent? You know, could you make the case that like well, you were hinting Taylor, at that? Taylor, if you're such a good trader, you know what time to buy the pizza. <laughs> 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 Paying Bitcoin in dollars, I should hire you. Oh, yeah, well. uh, listen, it's really difficult to understand in the short term where markets are going. Yeah. Um, in the longer term, it's not so difficult. Just look at a, a 15 year or 12 year log chart of, of the Bitcoin price and think about the adoption that is happening all over the world. Um, you know, it, it is now an asset, it's a store of value. Uh, I, I like to kid when Stan Druckenmiller said it was an asset. He's literally the best investor we've seen in 30 years. It's an asset. <laughs> and so there are enough Stan Druckenmillers, there are enough institutions that have said they believe in this as a store of value, that it is a store of value. Mike. And therefore, I, I just see it heading one direction. The rollout today for El Salvador is choppy. There's a price drop. There was technology glitches at the beginning. A BitGo, which you've agreed to buy, is a company that is working with El Salvador. What do you make of today's rollout and what impact might it have on future countries that may choose to go this route? Venezuela, for example, comes to mind when a lot of people talk about this. Listen, no matter whatever you're doing, a new technology rollout, there are glitches. And so I guess the real question is come back in six weeks uh, or 12 weeks and 
let's talk about how it's working, you know, for the people of El Salvador, for the system itself. Um, you know, I'm, I remember when Obama rolled out Obamacare, it was kind of a disaster for a little while, and they, they, they sorted the glitches out. You know, doing things at scale is not easy. And so I've got a lot of faith that uh, they'll get this right. You know, the other thing is that we're in a place where you see these young traders moving to the market uh, across the world, and you see them buying NFTs, you see them buying meme stops for the last few, few months. What's the next big thing that you think that the retail trader could catch on to? Ah, great question. Listen, I think what the lesson that we should learn from this year is that there are so many eyeballs out there, right? And the faster you can see something that catches those eyeballs and builds community, the faster the price moves. And so it literally is watching for what the next idea is. Um, and then those communities become much stronger than I ever thought they'd be, right? I used to think, okay, Bitcoin will work and, and the, the cryptos that get a lot of use, like Ethereum things building on it, or even Solana, lots of people are now building on it, would work. But some of these other things wouldn't, they wouldn't have a purpose. And I've just been wrong, right? You look at Cardano or XRP, they have these fan clubs, these very uh, uh, committed uh, investors who are bringing people into their community and really it's a sense of identity. And so I think what we're learning is the internet uh, and retail interest has created almost a new way to think of investing. It's can they build a community? Can they make it sustainable with, you know, bringing more people in? And when money's cheap and there's so much money floating around, we're seeing, you know, things that I never thought would happen. I mean, GameStop, AMC, perfect examples of, of yeah. stocks that now don't tr that trade completely divorced from the fundamentals of the company. Um, and you're seeing that same thing in crypto. So when we talk about sort of the way some investors gravitate to things, Mike, I mean, you mentioned Solana a couple times here. We talk about uh, the, the token uh, sort of tied to that and just how fast it sort of uh, sort of vaulted itself into sort of public consciousness here. I'm curious as to what you think is driving that and about the sustainability of some of these moves here, because that always seems to be the question people have, particularly people new to this. They sort of look at the volatility and they wonder, where, where is this sustainable? Well, look, you look at, you know, Sam Bankman Free, who runs FTX, is 30 years old, who just raised $900 million for his company at $18 billion valuation from some of the best investors in the world, right? He's a legend in this space and he's the backer of Solana. Uh, and so that's his ecosystem. So people are betting on Sam. Uh, as more people come in, they get excited, right? Institutions are coming in. Um, and it hit a, it hit a critical, point of acceleration, where now it's a thing. Well, what's a blockchain? A blockchain is a database that we all share. Solana is exciting because it's easier to build on because it's really fast, right? It's faster than Ethereum. It's faster because it's not nearly as decentralized. It's not nearly as secure and safe in some ways, right? There's only, you know, uh, a couple dozen validators of the Solana blockchain where there's thousands on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, right now, consumers don't seem to care, right? It's decentralized enough. And regulators don't seem to care. There is a fair question. Will in time regulators say, we're not gonna let this business infrastructure for our country or the world be built on blockchains that aren't decentralized? Like that's up for grabs. You know, that's, that's, that's really in the weeds. Uh, right now, that's not what the market's focused on. The market's fo focused on fast is better, and can they get people to build on it? And is there excitement around it? And so, you know, Luna, Luna is another blockchain, and I have big investments in full disclosure. Okay. Uh, Juan from Korea, he's like the Sam Bankman Free. He's pulling all kinds of products and projects into his ecosystem. Mike, unfortunately, I have to be sort of the boring one that brings us back to macro. I am wondering your call on rates. Are you still short? Are you betting rates to climb from here? I am short rates. Listen, you know, they've had a decent little move recently. Uh, you know, rates higher, prices lower. I just think you, it's, it's impossible to own as much crypto as I do or other assets, equities, and not want to have a big rate short. Um, there is a possibility that inflation is much stickier than we think and accelerates and that the Fed will have to... To, to move sooner than they think and more aggressive when they move. 
Um, they might not. If they don't, I think assets keep going up for a long period of time, right? As long as Powell keeps easy money, you can stay long your assets. But it feels like it's a it's a really important hedge for any portfolio that's asset heavy.